Hello, good day everyone. Um, today, we're going to discuss surfaces and solids. This is under the third course outcome of uh, trigonometry with solid mensuration. At this stage, we're now going to discuss prisms, area, and volume. Let's start with the most basic of all of these solids. Let's have prisms. Suppose that two congruent polygons lie in parallel planes. Let's have this plane 1 and plane 2. In such a way that their corresponding sides are parallel. If all pairs of corresponding vertices of these polygons such as A and A prime in figure 9.1a are joined by line segments, then the solid or space figure that results is known as prism. So this is A and A prime, B and B prime, C and C prime. So the region or the space corresponding to this solid is a prism. The congruent figures that lie in the parallel planes P and P prime are the basis of the prism. The parallel planes need not be shown in the drawing of prisms. Suggested by an empty box, the prism is like a shell that encloses a portion of space by the parts of plane that forms the prism. Thus, a prism does not contain interior points. In practice, it is sometimes convenient to call a prism, such as a brick, a solid, of course. This interpretation of a prism contains its interior points. In figure 9.1a, segment AB, segment AC, and segment BC, A prime B prime, AC prime, and BC prime are base edges of the prism. The base edges lie in parallel planes P and P prime. So this is the plane P and the plane P prime. The line segments that connect corresponding vertices A A prime, B B prime, C C prime are the lateral edges of the prism. Because the lateral edges of this prism are perpendicular to its base edges, the lateral faces, such as the quadrilateral ACC prime, are rectangles. The bases and lateral faces are collectively called as the faces of the prism. Any point at which these three faces are concurrent is a vertex of the prism. Thus, the points A, B, C, A prime, B prime, and C prime are the vertices of the prism. So these points are the vertices of the prism. These are the lateral faces of the prism. In figure 9.1b, the lateral edges of the prism are not perpendicular to its base edges. So they form an angle not 90 degrees. These angles with respect to the base edges or the lateral edges are often described as an oblique or slanted angles. For this oblique prism, the lateral faces are parallelograms. So here, 
the lateral face is not a rectangle but a parallelogram. Considering the prism in figure 9.1, we are led to the following de definitions. A right prism is a prism in which the lateral edges are perpendicular to the base edges at their points of intersection. It forms right angles. An oblique prism is a prism in which the parallel lateral edges are oblique to the base edges at their point of intersection. So it is not forming a right angle. Part of the description is used to classify a prism depends on its base. For instance, the prism in figure 9.1 is a right triangular prism. In this case, the word right describes the prism, whereas the word triangular refers to the triangular base. So this is a right triangular prism. So this is oblique. while this would be obl oblique prism. Similarly, the figure in 9.1b is an oblique square prism. Both prisms in figure 9.1 have an altitude perpendicular to the segment between the planes that contain the bases of length h also known as the height of the prism. So the height is the distance between the bases of the prism. Name each type of prism in figure 9.2. So this is a hexagon and it is perpendicular. So we have right, hexagonal, prism. For B, it would be oblique. So oblique, pentagonal, prism. For letter C, we have right equilateral triangular prism. So the lateral edges are perpendicular to the base edges of the hexagonal base. So the prism is a right hexagonal prism. For letter B, the lateral edges are oblique to the base A edges of the pentagonal base. The prism is an, an oblique pentagonal prism. For letter C, the lateral edges are perpendicular to the base edges of the triangular base. Because the base is equilateral, the prism is right equilateral triangular prism. Let's have the area of a prism. The lateral area L of a prism is the sum of the areas of all lateral faces. The right triangular prism of figure 9.3 a, B, and C are the lengths of the sides of either bases. These dimensions are used along with the length of the altitude denoted by H to calculate the lateral edge of uh, the lateral area, the sum of the areas of the rectangles ACC prime A prime, 
A B B prime A prime and B C C prime B prime. The lateral area L of the right triangular prism can be found as follows. L is equal to A H plus B H plus C H equal to H times A plus B plus C. So that would be H times the sum of the sides A, B, and C. So it would be H times the perimeter. So P is the perimeter of the base of the prism. This formula, L is equal to HP, is valid for finding the lateral area of any right prism. Although the, la the lateral faces of an oblique prism are parallelograms, the formula L is equal to HP can be used to find its lateral area as well. The lateral area L of any prism whose altitude has a measure H and whose base has a perimeter P is given by L is equal to H times P. So this is Theorem 9.1.1. L lateral area is equal to the height times the perimeter of the base. For any prism, the total area is the sum of the lateral area and the areas of the bases. We know that the bases and the lateral faces are known as the faces of a prism. Thus, the total area T of the prism is the sum of the area of all of its faces. So it would be the sum of the lateral area and the two base areas. For theorem 9.1.2, the total area T of any prism with lateral area L and base area B is given by T is equal to L plus 2B. It would be the lateral area plus the area of the two bases. So base 1 plus base 2. To find the area of a prism from Heron's formula, so we know that the base area B of a right triangular prism in figure 9.6 below can be found by the formula B is equal to the square root of the quantity S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C, in which the semi-perimeter of the triangular base is denoted by S. So S is equal to the semi-perimeter, so S is equal to A plus B plus C over 2. Let's refer to this figure. So, if we want to get the lateral area, it would be H times the perimeter. The perimeter is 13 plus 14 plus 15 inches. So that would be 27 plus 15 equal to 42 inches. The lateral area would now be 42 times 8. So the lateral area is 4 times 8, 32. So that would be 336 square inches. To get the base areas, the base area would be equal to the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. So S is equal to 
13 plus 14 plus 15 all over 2. Let's calculate this. You may use your calculator for this computation. So this is 21. The area of the base is equal to the square root of 21 times 21 minus 13, that is 8. Twenty-one minus fourteen, that is seven. And twenty-one minus uh, minus fifteen, six. So the base area is the square root of seventy fifty-six. So the base area is eighty-four. So. Our total surface area is now 336 plus twice of 84. And that would be 504 square inches. A regular prism is a right prism whose bases are regular polygons. Regular polygons have equal sides and equal interior angles. Consider this definition. The figure, the prism in figure 9.2 point, uh, consider this definition. The prism in figure 9.2c will be called a regular triangular prism. A cube is a right square prism whose edges are congruent. The cube is very important in determining the volume of a solid. Let's now have the volume of a prism. For the volume of a prism, to introduce the notion of volume, we recognize that a prism encloses a portion of space. Without a formal definition, we say that the volume of the solid is the number that measures the amount of enclosed space. To begin, we need a unit for measuring volume. Just as a meter can be used to measure length, and the square yard can be used to measure area. A cubic unit is used to measure the amount of space enclosed within a bounded region of space. The volume enclosed by the cube shown in the figure is one cubic inch or one inch cube. The volume of a solid is the number of cubic units within the solid. Thus, we assume that the volume of any solid is a positive number of cubic units. So this is a cube with side 1 inch each. So the volume is 1 times 1 times 1, so that's 1 cubic inch. Corresponding to every solid is a unique positive number V, known as the volume of that solid. The simplest space figure for which we can determine volume is the right rectangular prism. Such a solid might be described as a parallelepiped or as a box. 
because boxes are used as containers for storage and shipping such as a box card, it is important to calculate volume as a measure of capacity. A right rectangular prism is shown in figure 9.10. Its dimensions are length, width, and height. The volume of a right rectangular prism of length 4 inches with 3 inches and height 2 inches is easily shown to be 24 cubic inches. The volume is the product of the three dimensions of the given solid. So volume is length times the width times the height. So that is 3 times 2 times 4. So it should be 4 times 3 times 2. So 6 times 4, so that is 24 cubic inches. We see not only 4 times 3 times 2 is equal to 24, but also the units of volume are in inch times inch times inch or cubic inches. In figure 9.11a, and B illustrates that 4 by 3 by 2 box must have the volume 24 cubic inches. 4 by 3, so that would be this region, sorry, 4 by 3. So it would be 1, 2, 3, 4 by 1, 2, 3. And then you have two layers of that. Or you can have 4 by 3 by 2. So you have 3 by 2. So you have 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2. So every subsection is a 6 square inches rectangle. And you have 4 pieces of that. So you have. 4 times 3 times 2. We see that there are 4 layers of blocks, each of which is a 2 by 3 configuration of 6 cubic inches. Figure 9.11 provides the insight that leads us to the following postulate. The volume of a right rectangular prism is given by V is equal to L times W times H, where L measures the length, W the width, and H the altitude of the prism. In order to apply the formula found in, for, uh, in postulate 26, the units used for the dimensions L, W, and H must be alike, as illustrated in example 6. For this example, find the volume of a box whose dimensions are 1 foot, 8 inch, and 10 inches. Although it makes no difference which dimension is chosen for L, W, or H, it is most important that the units of measure be the same. So the length is 1 foot. And this is equivalent or equal to 12 inches. And thus, we use length times the width times the height. So length is now 12 inches with 8 inches and height 10 inches. Multiplying this all together, we have 960 cubic inches. Note that the formula for the volume of a right rectangular prism V equal to LWH 
could be replaced by the formula V equal to the base area B times H. Where B is the area of the base of the prism for a rectangular prism, B is length times the width. As stated in the following postulates, this volume relationship is true for right prisms in general. The volume of a right prism is given by V is equal to B times H. Where capital B is the area of the base and H is the length of the altitude of the prism. In real world applications, the volume V is equal to base times height is valid for calculating volumes of oblique prisms as well as right prisms. It is the area of the base times the height. So for example, you just need to have the area of the base and identify the height. So even if it is oblique, you just need to determine the height and the area of the base.